Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I was a bad boy today. I didn't put out a video this morning because I wanted to spend the day working on my social media accounts and getting everything all integrated with the website and the Patreon and everything. The links to all of that are going to be in the description. And I also had to work today. But at the end of the day, before I made my two and a half hour drive home, I happened to hop onto YouTube and did a quick search for today's Flat Earth videos. And I came up with one. And I, I, I'm not proud to say the 12 year old in me came out. So this video was about gas pressure next to a vacuum. And it's by this guy right here. Don't sphere the truth. He's got 17,000 subscribers, so he's kind of like a first class flurf here. So I didn't feel too bad about trolling him. And I'll tell you something, I wasn't disappointed because I met these two guys. I met Tweedledum and Tweedledummer. So let's cue up the music and have a look at the conversation. Okay, so after doing a quick scan of the video and realizing that there really wasn't anything there, I decided to put up a quick comment. Are you really having a problem understanding that there is a downward acceleration of gravity causing a pressure gradient from sea level to the vacuum of space? Now mind you, we can measure this downward acceleration on any iPhone or iPad. I've done it many times here. It's not really in question. So. That was my little opening troll statement because I know he'd really bite at that. And I wasn't disappointed. So don't sphere the truth. Gas pressure next to a vacuum, please. Demonstrate it or keep denying thermodynamics in every vacuum test ever conducted. How about Blue Marble Science's demonstration of gas pressure in an open-ended tube, just exposed to the air? I mean, literally. Here's a video that Blue Marble Science did that demonstrated gas pressure without a container. He put an open-ended tube next to his house and uh, ran some butane into it. And as you can see there by the pressure meter, he was able to generate a pressure without a container. There you go. So my first move, of course, is to be reasonable. Don't sphere the truth. You clearly don't know what thermodynamics is or you wouldn't make the claim. There is a force acting on the system as evident by the pressure gradient. Straightforward. Now his response, of course, was, let me know when you have a demonstration troll. Continue rambling on now. Well, I just demonstrated it with Blue Marble Science's video. So here I am pointing this out. It's an open-ended container demonstrated a pressure differential between the top and the bottom of the tube. All you have to do is just continue this on until you get up to the vacuum of space. The same thing happens. The top of the tube will be a vacuum. The bottom will be a full atmosphere. It will be no container. It will be an open system. But his response was, I just explained that scenario to someone else. An open container still has walls and a floor and it did not have a vacuum at the top. It's not even comparable in the slightest. Are you going to demonstrate it or keep repeating straw mans? Hey, he said a logical fallacy. And here I am telling him I'm not constructing a straw man, I'm simply correcting his misunderstanding. And I talk very specifically about this 30,000 foot tube up to airline levels and then one up to 62 miles where space begins. Put a negative 17 tor vacuum that is light years upon light years wide and tall right above. Okay, so at this point here, I'm starting to have a little fun with him. Because all he's doing is parroting stuff that he heard on Nathan and Quantum Eraser and Sleeping Warriors channel. You know, this negative 17 tor is the key to it. This is the standard flat earth line. So I kind of call him on it because he's not backing down, he's doubling down. So what is 10 to the negative 17 tor? How's that relate to sea level pressure in, in inches of mercury? Okay, so we've met Tweedledum. Now we're going to meet Tweedledummer. Well, here's God's grasshopper coming to the rescue. A downward acceleration of gravity causing a pressure gradient from sea level pressure to the vacuum of space. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Seventh grade science level explanation of why we have a pressure gradient in the atmosphere. But his comment is kind of confusing. This is pure word salad. It's a classic conundrum of bullshit baffling brains. 
For example, his expression of downward, to which anyone with any common sense understands that there is no downward on a globe because up and down is relative to your position on the globe. His lack of understanding is expounded only by his language. Does he honestly think that I was referring to north and south as being up and down in reference to the atmosphere? When you're looking at the atmosphere, down is what we expect it to be, towards our feet. Up is towards the sky. That is the direction that gravity works. Here, let me explain it to you on this globe. Oh dear. Never mind. <clears throat> Cheers. This is my Bob the Science Guy glass from Gary. All right, let's hit it. Well, right about now, Don't Sphere the Truth realizes he's not going to get anywhere with me because I'm not buying his crap. So God's grasshopper comes up. And this is, just think about this, because this ranks right up there with Anthony Riley and his triangles and Nathan Oakley and his meters and kilometers conversion. So, how many inches of mercury would that be? Do you know? He repeats my question. Inches of mercury? L O O O O L. Yes, what you're thinking is true. You know, I had to sit there and stare at this for just a minute. God's grasshopper. Bob wants to measure mercury, a liquid, in inches. I'm going to play with him for a while. Okay. I'm your huckleberry. So God's grasshopper, do you know how many inches of mercury it is between sea level and 10 to the negative 17 Tor? Now, for those of you that need a quick refresher, and I, I can't for the life of me think of anybody who does, but I'll put it up for completeness sake. This is a mercury barometer, all right? It's a glass tube that's sealed on one end and filled with mercury. You invert it in a little tub of mercury Air pressure from the atmosphere presses down on the tub of mercury and drives mercury up the tube. The way you measure the pressure is by figuring out how many inches that column of mercury goes up. It's 29.92 inches, or 760 tor, which is a millimeter of mercury. Note millimeters and inches are both units of length, not volume length. Now, mind you, he was laughing at me for measuring barometric pressure in inches. And basically, I just put this up. Uh, I didn't think you knew what barometric pressure in inches of mercury was at sea level. No need for me to address this video. It's just a repeat of Nathan Oakley, and I've already addressed it with him. So his response is just classic. You concede you can't measure liquid in inches. That's good. We can move on. What PSI are we undergoing right now? I wonder if he knows that he's measuring pressure in square inches. I don't know. But just when you thought it couldn't get any better, it does. God's grasshopper. Bob the Science Guy, I remember you. You're the guy that attempts to work out the volume of a liquid using just inches. And then he repeats my question, what is a tor and what is normal atmospheric pressure in tor? Tor, which is millimeters of mercury by the way, is a measurement of pressure. It differs deepening, deepening? on atmospheric conditions. Do you hope to prove the world is a globe, and how so? No, I don't really think I'm proving the world's a globe here, Tweedledumber. Uh, okay, I, I, I don't even know what to say to this. Of course it varies by atmospheric 
conditions, but the basic unit is a millimeter of mercury of pressure. All right, 760 torr and 742 torr actually have meaning. They're different pressures, and you can tell exactly what they are by how many torr they are. So I let them stew for a few minutes, and then I responded. God grass, God's grasshopper, listen, Flurf. A tor is a millimeter of mercury. It's a measure of pressure, simpleton. Thanks for the laugh and stay in school. Atmospheric pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury. You know, inches and millimeters are both units of length. It has to do with the height of the column of mercury in the vacuum tube, which is a direct measurement of atmospheric pressure. And then I just basically told him, how do you measure a liquid in inches? That literally made my night and ranks right up there with Riley and Nathan. Thank God we had a breakthrough though. Now I get it, Tor is a millimeter of mercury. Atmospheric pressure is 29.22, no, 29.92 inches of mercury. Until now, I never got the connection. Yep, it's a globe, you're right. I never got it till now. We've made a breakthrough. God's grasshopper. My work is done then. Have a great life and stay in school. Then maybe you will learn that a mercury barometer is read in column heights, inches or millimeters, to represent the pressure. It isn't a measurement of volume, idiot. Still glad you wanted to play? God's grasshopper will do, thanks. Well, at least he's going on for higher education. He might actually make it to high school some. So after I disposed of Tweedledumber, Tweedledum comes back. At Bob the Science Guy, your work is done when you show the world gas pressure and gradients next to a larger vacuum without the gas dissipating. Well, the atmosphere of Earth, there you go. Go to any mountaintop, measure the pressure, see what it does, see what it is compared to the valley. Uh, you can actually do it on an elevator in a tall building. We will still wait. You know, with all that time you waste on deflecting and creating word salads, you could have done this by now, but you won't because you cannot. Well, I did it before I even came on. And the bottom one here is kind of, kind of the whole take home message of this video. Don't sphere the truth. It says a lot when you describe an accurate presentation of fact on a seventh grade level as word salad. Hilarious, thanks. We have Dumb and Dumber here, I see. Well, guys, I just wanted to give you a brief look into the day in the life of Bob the Science Guy. This is what I deal with day in and day out. This stuff almost writes itself. But I just wanted to bring some special attention to this one because it just... Measuring liquids in inches. He, he never made the connection, did he? Well, oh well. You know, you think you might reach somebody, but no, they won't because they can't get past their own narrative and, and even listen. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sign out from Northern Michigan this evening. Make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. We'll have some more fun with these guys every now and then. But mostly I want to kind of stick with serious subjects here and maybe teach some things to people that actually want to learn things. So, we'll continue on my ongoing mission. Thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.